Good morning MPC at sa ating mga bisita. Welcome sa weekly economic uh, briefing. Kasama na natin si Assistant Secretary Tony Lambino to introduce our guest. Salamat po, Yusek Rocky. Magandang umaga sa lahat at welcome po sa ating weekly economic press briefing co-hosted by the Economic Development Cluster and PCOO. Ang layunin na mas padaliin ang pagninegosyo sa bansa ay kabilang sa 0 to 10 point socio-economic agenda ng Administrasyong Duterte. Ang Anti-Red Tape Authority o ARTA ay naitatag sa visa ng Republic Act 11032 o ang Ease of Doing Business and Efficient Government Delivery Act na nilagdaan ni Pangulong Duterte noong Mayo 2018. Sa pamamagitan ng ARTA at ng Ease of Doing Business Act, nakakapagbigay ng mas mabilis na transaksyon at serbisyo ang iba't ibang ahensya ng pamahalaan at isa Isa rin itong hakbang para mas palakasin ang kampanya laban sa korupsyon. Kasama sa layunin ng Ease of Doing Business Act, ang pagbibigay ng mas efficient at effective na business environment na siyang magpapataas sa antas ng ating competitiveness. Makakasama po natin ngayong araw si ARTA Director General Jeremiah Belhika na magbibigay ng ilang mahahalagang update sa kanyang 99th day in office, no? one day in advance of his first 100 days as ARTA Director General, DG Belhika. Thank you very much, uh, Asik Tony, and uh, sa lahat po na mga kasama natin sa press. Uh, this is indeed a very important day. The 99 days report is not a 100 days report because um, dapat to mas mabilis at mas maaga na tayo sa nakasanayan. Milestones come and go, but the impact of change rarely go unnoticed. I am Director General Jeremiah Belica of ARTA. On July 3, was appointed and assumed office on July 9 this year and was called upon to serve our country with humility and zeal. I have followed the President's mandate and have accepted the challenge to be the leader in the forefront of our war against red tape. In this time and in this age, the challenge may seem to be overwhelming but with the promise of a new Philippines by our president, one that is progressively competitive, we battle on facing every challenges, complication, and, obst and obstacle with a singular purpose. This report serves as an encouragement to every Filipino. Kami po ay patuloy na nagtatrabaho upang ayusin ang sistema ng negosyo at paglalakad o, pa pa or palakad ng pamahalaan Hindi ho kami titigil hanggang ang pangako po ng ating Pangulo ng kanya pong administrasyon ay ganap at nararamdaman na ng bawat mamamayan. Muli, marami pong salamat sa inyo at sa ating pong may kapal. So today we would be reporting and discussing some important accomplishments that we did under uh, my leadership within the, within the 99 days of this administration. So, I would be discussing per uh, important uh, priority accomplishments that we did, not necessarily chronologically. First is on, on 13 of August 2019, ARTA released an order for the automatic approval of pending applications with the Land Transportation Franchising Regulator Regulatory Board for the Certification of Public Convenience. Gayun din po, ARTA also submitted its findings and recommendations on the LTFRB TNVS issue to the DO, to, to DOTR Secretary Arthur Tugade. Also on the on 9th September 2019, ARTA also issued an order of automatic approval and or renewal of 3,125 applications with the FDA. And also an order for automatic approval of four applications for accreditation of external auditors and auditing firms with the Security Exchange and Commission SEC. Just to clarify, ARTA has no power to approve the applications, but we have the mandate to determine the completeness of the submitted documents as well as to declare that by, by uh, operation of law, such submissions are already deemed approved automatically and we now order the agencies to release the papers and the certificates that would be corresponding to the approvals. Also, cases were already filed, both 
to the national and local officials. A case was filed with the reg two register of deeds, um, register of deeds of Davao City. A preliminary investigation report was also filed uh, against officials of the LTFRB. And 19 September, a case again was filed. And on, um, sorry, on, sep se on October 7, 2019, a case was filed against the mayor of San Nicolas, Batangas. And also another case was filed against the Register of Deeds of San Pablo City. And tomorrow, uh, Arta is also scheduled, scheduled to file another case against a, um, a governor of a certain province. And uh, we intend to do is this the filing of cases every week. On July 17, 2019, Barely seven working days from my assumption, we did already sign the IRR together with DTI Secretary Ramon Lopez and Civil Service Chairman Chairwoman Alicia De La Rosa Bala. The IRR was signed seven days and was uh, within seven days uh, from my assumption and it was made effective on 4 of August 2019. Um, also a... Notices were already sent to all government agencies, both national and local, for them to submit their sit updated citizens' charter on or before December 6, 2019. Kaya po para dun sa mga taong nagtatanong kailan ba namin mararamdaman ang simula ng pagpapasimpliho ng mga proseso, ang sagot po dyan, according po sa ating batas, is uh, 90 working days from the time na naipasa po yung IRR, which is December 6, kinakailangan sila po ay magsumiti na na kanila pong mga streamlined processes that would be reflected sa kanila pong citizens' charter. And also, uh, we already uh, were, was able to uh, conduct our advisory council meeting uh, with the Department of Trade and Industry Secretary Ramon Lopez being our chair. Uh, ARTA EODB Advisory Council already met twice. The council had its second meeting last October 10, 2019, during which we did present a very important program that we would be launching by the start of the year next year. We call it Project Nehemiah or the National Effort for the Harmonization of efficiency measures of interrelated agency. Now, also, we also did, conducted some enforcement activities by also calling uh, the five most uh, complaint agencies as mentioned by our president during the SONA. Uh, tinawag na po natin ito at sila po ay pinag-explain po natin kung ano po ang kanilang mga uh, solusyon. First, ano po yung kanilang dahilan kung bakit po dumadami ang mga complaints. Second, ano po ang kanilang mga most problematic transactions and choke points. Third, ano po yung kanilang solusyon po dito. At pang-apat, ano po ang kanilang mga grievance mechanisms. And uh, they did presented it, and also there is a continuing consultation and hearing po sa kanila, and we are really very uh, hopeful that by next year, ang mga choke points po na ito ay fully addressed na po, and with the reform-minded leadership by some of the heads, uh, is um, we are uh, almost certain na masasaid po lahat ng mga complaints na nakabinbin po sa kanila. Also, we did, in, we did conducted surprise visit, visits sa iba't iba pong mga ahensya uh, at nagkaroon din po tayo ng mga um, activities po na kung saan tayo po yung nakapanghuli po ng mga fixers. Noong July 26 po ay meron po tayong nahuli at joint operation po ng NBI, ARTA at ng Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission at patuloy po ang aming campaign sa mga private sectors na wag hong makipagsabwatan sa mga fixers 
At uh, dahil po ang arta na po ang magiging fixer ninyo kung iniipit po ang inyong mga papel, wala pa pong bayad. We also met personally with the different heads of the agencies NEDA, DAP, DICT, the Office of the Solicitor General, DNR, DPWH, Pag-ibig, LTO, BIR, uh, LRA, BOC, the DTI of course, and the SSS as well as the SEC. Embassies, the Chambers of Commerce, business groups, tuloy-tuloy po ang ating pakikipagpanayam po sa kanila. Now I have mentioned a while ago that we are continuing Uh, continually monitoring the reforms that are being undertaken by the five most complaint agencies and included din po ang FDA, bagamat hindi po sila nabanggit po doon po sa lima ng ating uh, during the SONA na ating Pangulo, sila din po itinututukan at patuloy pong tinututukan po ng ARTA. Gayon din po ang Land Transportation Franchising Regulatory Board or LTFRB. Pero aside from that, we are now also Um, in the process of firming up our strategy for the interagency streamlining efforts po ng gobyerno. Ito po yung binanggit ko po sa inyo kanina na program ni Himaya. The program ni Himaya basically is a sectoral approach to streamlining. What ARTA has found out in the course of our studies and consultation that government agencies are fond of uh, the practice of Streamlining in silos. Ibig sabihin na uh, ang inyo pong streamlining efforts kadalasan natin ay kanya-kanya at hindi po synchronized sa iba po nating kapo ahensya that is also providing a related service or services. Now, the sectoral approach that we are talking about sa program ni Himaya would be, should be aligned with the 10-point socioeconomic agenda of the President. So we have a preliminarily um, did um, identified some key sectors such as housing, energy, uh, of course, uh, logistics. And uh, together with the NEDA and also the, the Development Academy of the Philippines uh, and also the office, of course, the office of the president, uh, we seek to firm up the sectors na makakasama po dito by next year, 2020. Ang amin pong goal dito is by 2020, 52 weeks challenge na mabawasan po ng 52% ang mga processing times, ang, ang uh, requirements, ang processes, at pati na rin po ang kanila pong mga cost. No? At ito po ay uh, magkakaroon po ng intensive planning tayo sa darating pong mga panahon dito po sa ilang pong mga ahensya. And uh, amin din pong uh, tinitingnan na ang 2020 would be a year of streamlining efforts na gagawin po natin dito interrelated dahil uh, just to give you an example, in the housing sector, we found out that if you want to, to build a socialized housing project, Uh, more or less, mga 27 agencies with 147 signatories. Uh, in the uh, logistics sectors, uh, kayo po ay uh, nasa tracking business, logistics po, 22 different uh, agencies with more or less about 150 signatures. And I could go on the list and, you know, this is not a an isolated issue po ng, ng housing, ng logistics, ng chemicals, ng food. Ito po ay nakagawian na po natin sa atin pong pamam sa pamahala pamamahala sa nakaraang mga panahon at administrasyon but with the passage of the ease of doing business law we now have an interagency approach in streamlining now the promise of our president president Duterte would soon be highly impacting the business community especially those which provides the what what we call the um, Uh, basic services po at basic needs ng mga tao. Ang, ang bahay, pagkain, kuryente po. At ngayon ay kasama rin po dyan po sa uh, mga sektor na yan is yung building of the common towers para magkaroon po ng mas mabilis na internet connection at interconnectivity. And I would also, lastly, and I would just want to make a, a um, an announcement that 
together with DICT, ARTA did already sign a, a, a uh, memorandum of agreement during the soft launching of the National Business One-Stop Shop. Ano po itong National Business One-Stop Shop? Ito po yung one-stop shop na mga national government agencies na kapag gusto mo pong magtayo ng iyong negosyo ay hindi ka na kailangan pumunta sa SEC, sa BIR, sa SSS, Philip Pag-ibig at sa local government po separately. With the signing po na to and the, in the uh, plan full launching implementation po by, by February 2020 ay sa SEC ka na lamang pupunta at singular form na po yan, unified form. At uh, kung kompleto po ang inyong mga requirements, sila na po ang magtutulak ng mga information sa mga iba pong mga ahensya. And within the day po ay makukuha po ninyo ang inyong pong registration. Ito po ay isa po sa pauna po natin doon sa tinatawag na project ni Himaya. Doon po sa, sa banal na kasulatan, may storya po na ni Himaya did build the walls in 52 days. Now let us build our wall against red tape and we know that with the law and with the president's unction and with Arta Altehelm and with God's grace, we would be able to fight red tape and become at the forefront of this generation. Maraming salamat po and we are now open for questions. MPC, may tanong kayo? Pia Gutierrez and then Alvin. Hi, sir. Sir, you mentioned that you are set to file a case against a certain provincial governor. Could you give us more details on the case? Sir? Yeah, yes, ma'am. For confidential, we'll be filing it tomorrow. So we're inviting po kayo sa, sa office of the ombudsman sa mga tao pong gusto sumama. But for, for uh, safety and security purposes, because it's, it would be tomorrow on the 100th day po namin, uh, please uh, beg our uh, indulgence put without uh, by not um, disclosing the identity. But what I could tell you is uh, kung ano po nangyari, uh, medyo in a general sense po, ano, uh, mga permit po na inipit na hilig na hilig po ng mga ibang mga government agencies po na meron pong uh, mga personal uh, layunin na hindi po natin alam. Bawal na bawal po yan. Iipitin mo ang papel ng wala namang dahilan nagaantay ka hindi mo alam so what for at whatever reason ang sabi nga ho ng ating pangulo kung kumpleto na sa listahan ang sinabmit na bayaran na ang lahat no at nandiyan na sa citizens charter ang lahat ng mga kailangan hindi mo na pwedeng dagdagan ang requirement o hindi mo pwedeng patagalin lagpas dun sa ating 3720 processing times so masasabi ko po ito pong governor na ito ay nagviolate po diyan sa processing times po natin at pati rin po doon sa uh, zero contact policy. And we would be uh, uh, issuing a press uh, statement on this, ma'am. Uh, sir, you also mentioned that uh, you plan to file cases against airing government officials every week. Meron po bang mga nakalinya na matataas na official dito? Meron po, ma'am. Meron, yes. Uh, basta nandiyan ho ang ebidensya. Um, at uh, doon po sa kalang opisina tumigil po ito. Eh, wala ho tayong uh, option na hindi ho isama ang dapat pong masama. So, kaya po yung mga offices po, that officials that are still contemplating whether totoo ba tong batas na ito. Uh, we're asking you now to please release the documents if they are already complete because it's not going to be easy on you. So, is sir, ilan po yung nakalinya na kakasuhan ninyo at ano po yung pinakamataas na position? Um, sa mataas na posisyon, okay, meron hong mga iba pong mga um, head of the agencies na involved. Uh, patawarin niyo po kami dahil uh, we don't want to preempt ourselves. But as, as far as that, as far as it goes, meron po tayong mga, mga kasabwat, kasabwat po dyan na nakikita po dyan sa mga pag-iipit ho ng papel. In fact, meron ho yung meron ho tayo nga uh, nakasuhan na ho na mayor at uh, mga presidential appointees din po. No, so ang amin pong batas kapag ito po ay non-presidential appointee sa civil service po namin, fine file kung mga presidential appointees po sa ombudsman po namin, ito maari pong ma-file. Ngayon, kung meron hong mga bagay na lagpas po sa sa jurisdiction po ng ARTA is we do um 
uh, submit this for the due consideration of the department heads kung sila po ay mayroong disciplinary powers po dyan sa mga agencies or doon na rin po sa Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission kung mga presidential appointees po for further investigation. MBC question, uh, Laila? Uh, sir, could you clarify what kind of cases will you be filing? Will this be administrative or criminal? Um, the first, the, okay, there's a two-strike rule uh, based on the RA 11032. The two-strike rule is for the first offense that they would be committing, it's an administrative uh, sanction, meaning six months suspension po ang uh, una pong pagkakamali po nila. Pag inulit po nila, ang sabi po ng batas, that would constitute second strike which would bear the penalty of dismissal from service, permanent disqualification to hold public office, whether effect, uh, elective or appointive, uh, may, mayroon pong imprisonment na one year to six years, mayroon pong fine na 500,000 to 2 million, at mayroon din pong forfeiture na kanila pong mga retirement benefits. Kapag kami po'y tinatanong bakit napakabigat po ng penalty, ang sagot po namin dahil napakagrabe na po ang piligrong dinulot ng red tape sa atin pong bayan. Sir, from what you've learned, uh, what's the most common cause of delay in processing these papers? Is it because um, they're asking for favors or bribes or laziness or attitude problems? It's, it's actually a mix of all of those, maybe. We would say, well, the bribing, the bribing would come um, always as a result of the inefficient systems. No po? Kaya pagka mabagal ang proseso, nakakaroon po talaga ng oportunidad na makahingian po. Pero hindi po lahat ng mababagal na mga proseso at sistema ay dahil po dahil gustong manghingi. So, uh, yung iba po sa kanila pong mga dahilan is dahil daw po uh, kulang daw sila sa tao. Yung iba po sinasabi nila na kulang daw po sila, po sila sa pondo. Pero kaya po before we even file a case, we make sure that we conduct a thorough uh, investigation, we ask the agency or the person involved ano bang dahilan, pag nakita po namin na meron po silang pwedeng nagawa sana na hindi po nila ginawa, and that's really the time that we would really, uh, that we file cases. In fact, um, marami po kaming ginagawa na, na, na while, before, uh, while we issue this order of automatic approval, uh, kasabay po niyan yung amin pong submission for policy recommendations kasi kailangan ho nilang makita na pwede ho pala nilang mapabilis yung proseso nila kung pag-iisipan lang nila pa ng mas mabuti kung paano nila mapapabuti mare-restructure ang mga systems. Now, I would also want to address uh, the common notion that if we automate it automatically be solves the problem of red tape. Well, the answer there is, well, that's partly true, but it's not entirely true kasi hindi ka pwede mag-automate hanggat hindi mo nararationalize yung sistema mo. Hindi mo napag-aayos uh, yung mga physical or manual processing mo ng maayos, halo-halo pa rin, magulo pa din. And if you automate a magulo system, a system na magulo, you will end up with a, you know, compounding the problem. At ito po yung nakikita namin ngayon sa iba't iba pong mga agencies. So the point being is, streamlining and making things easy and better is free. Hindi mo kailangan ng extra budget, hindi mo kailangan, well, of course, the extra budget and the extra manpower would really help. But to improve the system immediately, pwede na ho natin sadyain by simply thinking of how, how to make things easier. Tanggalin ang mga requirements na hindi mahalaga uh, i-consolidate mo na lahat ng mga data na kailangan mo para hindi pa hulit-ulit yung hinihingi ninyong mga data. And all of these things is common po nakikita natin sa mga government agencies because they normally operate in silos. But now we're, we're, we're really encouraging them and pushing them to uh, have a whole of government approach in streamlining. Thank you. Okay, Arian. Hi, sir. Uh, sir, I understand that the president named five uh, agencies na most complained daw po. Sir, ano po yung pina nakita nyo pinaka-problematic na agency in terms of following the anti-red tape law? And paano nyo po nasabi na sila yung pinaka-problematic? Okay. So, I'll, I'll get to that answer. But let me just put in perspective, um, what is our gauge for a red tape-ridden agency? Kasi, 
we have the mis sometimes the the uh, short conception that uh, dahil marami kang complaints sa opisina mo, ikaw na ang red tape ridden. Now, uh, we might be comparing apples and oranges. Bakit? Dahil kung ang isang ahensya is processing 100,000 applications a month and they get about 500 complaints, they are much better off than a, a, an agency that processes 5,000 and gets 400 complaints. So, kung complaints na nga pagbabasihan natin, Um, hindi ho yun yung total picture ng red tape ridden agencies. Now, am I exempting these five agencies? Of course not. What I'm saying is, there are other much worse agencies, red tape ridden agencies, that are not in the five. So, ang sinasabi namin, huwag kayong magbunyi kasi wala kayo dun sa lima. Kaya po, uh, makikita ho natin yung number ng processing times, yung, yung tagal po ng kanila pong mga processes, isa ho yun sa nakokontribute kung bakit sila dapat masama dun sa listahan po ng red tape ridden. Isa pa ho, if the agency is catering to clients which are na, na hindi humahilig magsumbong dahil negosyante ka because you know uh, you are you are afraid of reprisals. Hindi ka talaga magsusumbong pero hindi big sabihin yung ahensya walang red tape doon. In fact, baka mas red tape ridden pa yan. And uh, normally, yung mga ganyang mga agencies meron din silang mga alternative routes sometimes kung paano mo mapapabilis ang iyong transaction. So some of the negosyantes, some of the business people and the business owners would rather allocate a portion already of their budget just for this informal means of getting things done. Now, that's the reason why na sinasabi ho namin sa mga private sectors, wag na ho kayo makikipagsabuatan. Sinasabi ho namin sa PRC at sa IBP, tulungan niyo po kami. Kapag mga professionals po ay kumuha po ng mga fixers, suspindihin din po natin sila. Now, going back to, to uh, the five most complaint agencies, uh, this I could say, no? Three of them, I would, uh, I would say, uh, three or almost four of them, are actually reform-minded ang kanilang mga leaders. Nakikita po namin na from 100% complaints from 2018, they have actually lowered it down already to about 15% or even less na complaints at na-address. At makikita mo po yung trajectory ng mga agencies po na ito ay talagang maganda po yung kanilang mga improvement. No? I would just name sa, for example po, ang uh, Land Transportation Office, makita po natin that they have uh, actually did automate the, the payment system po nila. And uh, I think mga two months ago, they did hit uh, their 1 billion collection na automated. Ibig sabihin, wala pong dumaan ng mga fixers po dyan. Uh, kasama rin po dyan, I believe yung kanila pong uh, mga plaka po, ay meron silang sariling planta. Pero, Is there still much to be desired? Yes. But you will see the trajectory because of the reform-mindedness of the leaders. Now, pero meron po talagang isa o dalawa dyan sa lima na yan. And I would not uh, discuss because maybe this week maglalabas po kami ng order sa kanila. Ano po? Uh, na medyo kailangan po nilang pagbutihin ang kanila pong pagre-reforma. Dahil kung hindi po ay mapipilitan po talaga ang, ang uh, arta na manghimasok po dyan and even file cases kung ayaw po nilang sumunod. At sasabihin ko lamang po sa kanila, ang inyo pong mga citizens charter, siguraduhin po ninyo compliance sa 3 days, 7 days at 20 days. No excuses and if you would have any excuses from, from henceforth, That would we would take your citizens charter as an admission na ayaw nyong sumunod and we would be filing cases against you. So sir, ano nga po yung pinaka problematic na agency? Okay, from the five ag most complaint agencies kasi yung sinabi niyo mame. I know. I said the the president named uh, five. five most oh. complaint and then yeah. kung in terms of your records nga po ano yung pinaka problematic in terms okay. of the anti red tape we are we have acted and we are continuing to act on these agencies i would say okay yung fda alam po natin na yan po ay patuloy nating rinireporma dahil uh, san san tambak po ang inabutan po sa kanila and they are scheduled to make their presentation sa amin this week kasi nagkaroon po sila ng uh, kanilang strategic planning and they ask us na to sit down and to look at their presentation. And according to them, papasok daw sa 3720. Second, 
yung Land Transportation Franchising Board. Um, at first, nung pag-una ho namin pagpasok dyan, uh, kasagsagan po ng uh, issue po nila sa mga TNVS. And we have uh, continually called upon the leadership to, to institute immediate reforms po dyan. And just recently, ang LTFRB did invite ARTA to further explain not only the mandate po ng RA 11.032, pero yung tinatawag natin na regulatory impact assessment po, training. And they're now asking for ARTA's assistance to capacitate ang, ang kanila pong ahensya para mapabilis. And according to them, they would be setting aside a considerable amount for this, for all, all for the uh, ease of doing business matter. And thirdly, ang amin pong uh, pinoproseso po ngayon ay ang Land Registration Authority. No, ang LRA, uh, 10 years ago, sila po ay meron na pong uh, kontrata uh, para i-automate po ng fully ang mga regist re register of deeds at ang kalapong mga processing. Pero sa hanggang sa ngayon po, ay hindi pa ho na, 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 natatapos yung e-titling. And we're calling on the leadership na i-push nyo po, siguraduhin nyo po na i-convert nyo na po yan into e-titles. Dahil pag na e-title na po yan, nakita na po namin, naghiring na po kami with them, kapag mag, ma, makukonvert po ng e-title sa mga titulo, bibilis po, even less than one day, kaya po ang processing po dyan. So, these three agencies, ma'am, uh, nakatutok po kami ngayon sa kanila. Uh, sir, just to clarify, this three it doesn't mean that these three agencies are the most problematic. Sila lang yung may kailangan ng pinaka-focus nyo ngayon. Ganun po ba? Uh, well, we saw the problem sa kanila. Okay. And uh, that's why tinututukan namin sila. So, sila nga yung pinaka-problematic. You could say. But, I, okay, because sir. I didn't want, you see, you see um, kasi po, we don't want to make any categorization na it, kayo pinaka-ano kasi we want to make sure that the other agencies na amin pong pupuntahan does it, na hindi pa namin sila tinututukan sa ngayon, hindi big sabihin that they are better off right now. Kasi marami pa hong mga agencies na pumapasok po dyan at amin pong nakikita habang pumapasok po ang report. Ngayon, mahalaga po sa amin ang Land Registration Authority. Bakit po? Dahil po, ministerial po ang kanila pong, I'm sorry, ang Register of Deeds. Ministerial po ang supposed to be ang processing po dyan. And if you give me 90 days processing time, it simply would not <laughs> be... be be uh, reflective of what our president actually needs. So we're working with them and telling and 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 you know walking walking through with them ng hat po nakala mga proseso. But ang kahuli huli hat po nato kina kailangan huta yung magcomply po dun sa three days and seven days na processing times. Questions? Joseph, microphone, please. So how do we call? Just so it comes from you. Well, how do we call the three most complained agencies, or so maybe we could say that not not complain, most complained. Uh, sabihin natin that uh, the priority agencies that uh, tinutukan po ng uh, ARTA. And the focus was brought about by what? By it was brought about by complaints and also what proprio investigation as well as confidential information, sir. Would you say that these agencies have the most number of complaints? No. Not necessarily. So that's that's what I'm uh, trying to uh, drive at. But if you would see the enormity of dependency, then you would understand that uh, some of those who have already pending uh, doesn't necessarily complain. How did we choose the three again? Priority um, agencies po namin. You could you could turn it. Term it like that. Na if if uh, if you would want to term it, sabihin po natin yung tatlong ahensya po na tinututukan ng 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 uh, arta po ngayon. No? Kasama oh. po dun sa sa lima po ng uh, ahensya na binanggit po ni, ni Presidente. Okay. Questions? FPC? Wala na? Pero sir, pa, paano kayo namimili ng mga nire-raid na agency? Nire-raid? Ay, yung bigla niyong pinupunta, nagsusurprise visit. Ah, ma marami pong mga base ho sa, sa complaint. Hindi ho kami nagpapasok, pumupunta po dyan, kung wala po kaming information. Either sa amin pong mga mystery shoppers, meron ho kami mga mystery shoppers, 
or uh, mystery shoppers or doon ho mismo sa complaint din ho ng kapo ahensya o kaya naman po ay uh, simple complaint po ng mga industriya. Industriya. So pinupuntahan po namin sila uh, and uh, pinapakita mo namin ng mga specific complaints po sa kanila. At agara naman po nilang uh, tinutugunan. Paano nagpa-file ng complaint? Tumatawag, may tatawagan ba? Or paano yes. ginagawa nila? Yes, Yusek. Okay. So para sa mga gusto kong mag-complaint po sa ARTA, meron po kaming special um, uh, ang tawag dito, allocated uh, not unit, no? sa, sa presidential 8888. Kasi marami po sa ating mga kababayan, sana yung tumawag sa 8888. So if you would say to the 8888, this is an ARTA matter, meron po special account. Okay, that's that's what I'm saying. So, uh, also, pwede po kayong pumunta po sa amin pong uh, website sa Anti-Red Tape Authority or sa uh, www.arta.gov.ph Pwede rin po kayong pumunta po sa amin pong Facebook page sa amin pong messenger, uh, tumatanggap po kami dyan. And also sa email po namin sa, sa complaints at arta.gov.ph. Ngayon po, tumatanggap po kami ng complaints kahit electronically. Meaning, kahit basta po uh, kasama po yung apat na bagay na aming hinahanap, yung, yung pangalan o yung uh, identity, yung contact number nung nagrereklamo, yung yung ahensya ang inyong nirereklamo, yung ginawa po niyang violation po ng batas at pinakamahalaga ho sa amin yung ebidensya. Kasi marami hong nagsusumbong ayaw naman hong magpakita ng kahit ano pong ebidensya. Uh, ang diferensya ang pinakaiba ho ng uh, complaint sa chismis yung ebidensya. So kung meron po kayong ebidensya kahit gusto niyo po maging anonymous lamang, pwede na rin po 'yan. Basta make sure lang po, if you want to make an anonymous complaint, then the the evidence should at least compensate po dyan para amin pong maaksyonan po agad yan, motopropyo. Uh, um, Nestor and then Arian. Sir, uh, just a clarification on the three government agencies. Can we say that these agencies are the three most government agencies that need the most reforms? Yes. Kasi sir, why are you focusing on this three? Well, totoo, nakita talaga natin na they really they really need to shape up. Because there it's there's really red tape uh, inside these agencies. Pero kasi if we, if we would say na they're they're the most Marami pa ho kasi mga agencies na hindi pa ho natin na thoroughly na investigate. But sir, for your first 99 yes. days sila yes. po. Okay, yes. sir. Thank you. Yes. Hi, Heidi? Heidi Sampang? No, 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 no. no. Hindi ho tayo nangingimi. We just don't want to make any exceptions dun sa iba that they would feel, that they would think na sila ay uh, in a much better place. Okay. For the first 99 days, I think that that would that would be... Yes. Yes. So, Heidi... Sir, meron na bang update dun po sa mga kinasuhan po natin? Updates. We did file it uh, three weeks ago and uh, ang alam ko, they are now evaluating it because once we file it with the civil service and also uh, file it with the ombudsman, uh, the ombudsman now will conduct their own uh, investigation on them. So, yan po. Yan po ang kanilang uh, update po nila sa amin. Uh, ito po'y kanilang pinag-aaralan at hinihear na po yata nila ito sa kanilang mga ahensya. Questions? Joseph? Pag so, so far, first 99... Pag-alas question na ba tayo kay Joseph? Okay. First 99 days, how many complaints? Highest official? How many complaints? First 99... Complaints po sa amin, sa ARTA. That are been forwarded to the ombudsman. Ah, okay. Sa cases filed, you mean? Mm. Okay. So the cases filed, we have um, two register of deeds, um, one city mayor, uh, one clerk, so bali apat, and tomorrow with the governor. So we have around five, yeah. 
So the highest official would be a um, Sorry, sorry. Also with the LTFRB. How many? So uh, three officials were, fi were, were, were charged. Three officials. Three LTFRB. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, including yeah. tomorrow, no? And the highest is the governor. Governor yes. in the north, in the south, in the... <laughs> Bukas na lang, sir. <laughs> baka ano, baka makapaganda. <laughs> okay, no more question? Okay, uh, thank you, DG Belica. Thank you, thank you sir. Salamat din kay you, sir. Asek Lambino. Thank you, MPC. Back to main studio sa People's Television Network.